you stay, girl. Ah. Hey, guys. Okay. Didn't expect my dog to do that. How are you guys? All right, let's talk about bugs. I know, not a popular topic. We need to talk about bugs and getting rid of bugs and nests and mildew and mold from anything that we may bring in from the outside and want to bring inside for home decor purposes. A lot of people don't think about this. It's an important thing to talk about. Today I'm going to specifically be talking these, <laughs> these monstrous pine cones that I have discovered since moving to California almost a year ago. I'm obsessed with them. I love them. And I'm finally doing something with them. I'm very excited. Actually, I also like organized a hike with some girlfriends and they helped me find some pine cones. So I'm so thankful to them. All right, but before I start, my name is Kristen LaDuke. I am the owner of Porch Nook, a decorative paint business located in Folsom, California. Um, Facebook is giving me a bit of a hard time. It's kicked me off a couple of times. So if you can throw me some emojis, that would be so great. My personal favorite is the wow emoji. You can even throw out a comment. I would love to see your name pop up and tell me where you're watching from. Okay, here we go. You guys, anything you find outdoors, this includes stuff, uh, let's say curb finds, you guys. Like, you know that rustic, shabby screen door that you may have seen laying on the curb and you grabbed it and it's awesome? <laughs> I gotta tell you, I've met so many people who've done exactly that and they didn't even think about bugs. They didn't think about the mildew or mold that may actually be on these pieces that have been sitting on the curb. Who knows where they've been over the decades? Who knows how they've been treated? By the way, you also gotta treat anything um, like related to decor uh, for lead as well, if it looks like it's vintage. But anyway, we're, we're focusing on bugs right now. It's so important that you treat everything and anything from the outdoors for the indoors for bugs. Now. These pine cones, I'm obsessed with them. Since moving to California about a year ago, I've been obsessed with these and I've been meaning to work on some of these to see what I can do for my home decor with these. They're so big. This is actually a small one, you guys. This is like half the size of what I have currently in the oven uh, sterilizing right now. Um, yeah, these are, these are small. <laughs> have anything like this in Wisconsin. I don't know what they put in the water here in California. Can I get an amen? Um, so here's what you do, at least for pine cones or even like branches or, you know, sometimes people like to bring, um, you know, like, um, it's not sticks, it's not stumps. It's like, you know, um, rods of birch tree, you know, the beautiful tree that's got the white bark and they like to display them in their house. You got to make sure that stuff is sterilized. Um, so visualize with me. This is going to get so gross. Let's go down a really gross road together. <laughs> These things, when you pick them up off the ground, contain spiders, ants, worms, mud. Okay, let's get really gross. Praying mantis eggs. OMG, that happened to my Christmas tree. <laughs> uh, mildew, mold. Okay. When we're picking these things up with our kids and having fun and doing our little nature art projects, we don't think of stuff like this before we put them inside. So what do you do? This is what you do. Pine cones, something this big. Okay, what you do is that you soak them in vinegar and water. Vinegar and water, like one to four ratio. Soak them. I soak them for an hour. That soak them, Excuse me. Soak them for an hour. That's probably overkill, but that's what I do. And then I put them in the oven because these things are so stinking big. 250 degrees for at least an hour, guys, because they have a ton of sap in them, and they also um, are very thick, and you just got to make sure you get that heat um, completely, you know, you got to zap the entire pine cone inside and out. <laughs> oh, bugs. Okay. <laughs> this is such a gross topic. Okay. You also have to lay these down in the oven on a cookie sheet lined with at least tin foil because, you guys... Sap, it's going to kill your oven. You do not want to get sap on your cookie sheets. You don't want to get it on your oven. Don't want to get it on your clothes even. Do you know what I mean? Like getting a Christmas tree, a natural Christmas tree, which by the way, we don't do anymore because this year, our first Christmas tree in California was infested with praying mantis eggs. I kid you not. Anyway, it was covered in sap <laughs> amongst other things. Um, and so sap, just you got to be careful with it. So you got you to bake that out. Right, because can you imagine putting this on your nice tablecloth or maybe even a mantle and the sap gets on it? Ugh, that'd be awful. All right, so if you have a smaller pine cone, all right, how, why I got so passionate about pine cones, I have no idea. If you have a smaller, regular, Midwest-sized pine cone, <laughs> like these guys, 
I would do the oven, um, I would set it at 200 degrees and bake them for about an hour. That's what I would do. All right, guys, I'm just gonna show you what I'm doing. I've been putzing in my garage by myself and I was feeling kind of lonely. So <laughs> I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you guys on the clip. I hope you don't mind. Give me a shout out. Let me know where you guys are watching from. Let me know how you are. You know, I didn't really get dressed for the live. I wasn't actually planning on going live, but you know, I did at least draw in my eyebrows. So I thought, heck, why not? All right, so this one, let's see, am I pretty much done? No, this one is pretty much done. Let's see, this one. These are last season's pine cones. A whole new batch is coming in on the trees right now. So these are kind of ashen looking. When I get them fresh off the tree, I would say in the summer, they're gonna be this golden brown. And when you soak them in vinegar and then also bake them, you're going to be able to seal and keep the integrity of that beautiful auburn brown. Um, doesn't work for these because, again, they're kind of too old. Anyway, so here they do have, this is actually dried sap. I do still have, it looks kind of crusty, but at least I know it's bug free. Um, it's just dried sap. That's kind of the residue here. That you, Give me a thumbs up if you see what I'm seeing here. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out how to reduce the re residue. I think I'm going to give these one more, um, washing with just a sprayer and hot water, and then I'm probably going to lacquer them, seal them up, and then I'm probably going to paint them. I'm only going to paint the ones that are this ashen color. Once I find some that are this gorgeous brown, brown, and I'm sorry, the ones that look like that are in the oven being sterilized right now. Um, I wish I could show that to you anyway. Yeah, so what do you guys think? Do you guys have anything like this where you live? I mean, these things are huge. All right, so the, what I also did with these is that after I picked off the sap, I also clipped every single tip as well. These things can be like deadly. <laughs> I would hate if a small child actually got their hands on it because they're kind of sharp. I use my rose uh, shears to clip the tips. Uh, this one's from Fiskars. You know, I just realized I should probably give you guys a link later. I'll do that. And I've been just simply clipping off the tips. It's kind of like trimming your dog's nails, guys. And if I give these as gifts, I just want to make sure the points are not like, you know, super sharp. These things are sharp. I probably should be wearing gloves right now. So this one's pretty much done. I probably would will peel off a layer or two below to kind of make the base maybe, oops, sorry, make the base a little bit flatter. Looks like it's got legs right now. It's got the legs of a Victorian. <laughs> there, I may even take off more. All right, so before, I'm gonna show you the before. Right after I take it out of the oven, they look like, here's a good one. I wanna show you what the sap looks like. It's like Jurassic Park, right? I wanna find a mosquito in this thing. It's, um, here's the sap, it's golden. Give me a thumbs up if you can see this. They're like these little beads of sap. Let me know if you see that. Once you bake it, the sap comes out of the pine cone and it actually creates these little beads where, they, where the, um, the sap escapes. And you just have to flick it off and it's gone. Here's another example right here. You see this one? I'm just gonna, just flicks right off, so easy. I'm just gonna work on these sap. There are a lot of little sap dots. Do you see these? I'm just gonna flick these off. And then I'm going to show you how I clip the tips. You guys, this one's a, this topic is really short and easy, but I figure because I'm working on it, I might as well go live. Say hey to you guys. It's been about a week. So it's just a relief that I'm, this white residue is really just dried sap. It's nothing gross. That would make me like shriek and shrill. <laughs> I hate bugs. <laughs> there we go. All right, so I'm just gonna start. Oh, there's a tip. See that one right there? It just flicks right off. All right, again, just for safety reasons, I like to clip or trim the, the tips of the pine cone because they're so darn sharp. If you ever decide to sell pine cones, <clears throat> here's, here's the thing. So I actually researched, I went online like to Etsy.com and C 
seeing what people do with pine cones and when they sell them. I honestly have not seen anyone talk about sterilization of pine cones. And we're just talking about popping them in the oven, guys. You know, cleaning them with water and vinegar, scrubbing them down, getting the grass and the mud out. It's so important that um, before you actually buy a monstrous pine cone from an artist or a store from, you know, like an Etsy, make sure they're sterilized, guys. You know, I was passionate about this before when we were in Wisconsin, but who out there is familiar with the uh, California laws when it comes to agriculture? They are so particular about agricultural things that come across, come inside California. And the last thing you need is, you know, ship a pine cone from Maine, let's say, to your house in Kansas, and it's got a spider nest in it. Oh my gosh. So I got to do a better job keeping track. So what I should be doing actually to keep track because there's so many, it becomes a blur. I'd like to actually just work my way down. There we go. That's a better way of keeping track of the tips to make sure I get every single one of them. I honestly don't know the breed of these pine cones. And you find them littered all over um, the sidewalks here. I can't imagine one of these falling on your head. <laughs> I don't know why I go to the dark side so fast. I'm just a, you know, in my background, I used to work on the legal side of things when it came to marketing, making sure everything was legal and accurate and honest. So I'm always thinking of liability everywhere I go. It drives my husband crazy. What's everyone up to today? Do I have any Californians out there? It is, what time is it here? It's like, oh gosh, what time is it here? It's almost four o'clock here. So I gotta start making dinner here pretty soon. All right, so you guys, if you can throw me some ideas on what I can do with these pine cones, that'd be great. Again, I'm gonna have to seal them because again, I'm gonna have to get this dried, sterile, um, sap off of here but then I'm gonna to have to probably seal them with a lacquer so it just glues down any residue I can't get off and then I'm gonna paint them I was thinking copper because you guys know I'm obsessed with copper <laughs> I honestly don't know if I'm live you guys um if you can throw me some emojis that'd be so great because I could just be talking to myself in my garage but that wouldn't be new anything new So I was thinking about actually writing an article about debugging, not just nature art, guys, but I'm also talking about the rustic decor that we find at flea markets, barn sales. I mean, so many times we, I mean, can, can I get an amen? Can I get like a hands up or something where people have, you know, you guys have found something so rustically awesome and authentic. Have you even thought about sterilizing it? There are a lot of different techniques when it comes to furniture. And I just want to do a little bit more research as to what's the best way to do it. Um, I'm familiar with how to sterilize reclaimed barn wood. But when it comes to other things, let's say like the screen doors that have the, the chippy look to them. But you know what I did do, guys? I do have an article on porchnook.com where I do talk about lead and old paint. That's something at least I can offer you. So if you go to porchnook.com, go to the blog tab and there you'll find a link for an article for how to, to test for lead. So what was it? It was in the 1980s, early 80s, where, right? Lead paint was no longer manufactured. However, you guys, you know, you know, a lot of that paint must have been laying around 
in cabinets and were reused well after when it was um, made illegal to sell to the consumer market. And so important that you get those lead test kits. So again, go to porchnook.com, go to blog, the blog tab, and look for the article that simply states, you know, how to test for lead in your rustic decor. So the reason why I'm taking these off, it's just I want to flatten the base a bit. That's all. Probably gone too far. Too far! Yeah, this is looking pretty good, guys. Looking pretty good. I wish I could power wash these things, but I can't because then, you know, it'll disintegrate. <laughs> I'm going to flip it over. Okay, guys, so that's it. That's it. That's all I'm doing right now. I'm going to be in my garage for another 15 minutes, and then I'm going to make dinner. Because Mama's busy. Mama's got things to do. You guys have a great night. It's raining here in California. You guys take care. I'll talk to you soon. I do actually have an armoire that I got to paint. I got a couple, actually, and I got to get hopping on those. Um, I tend to have it. I have a tendency to go into creative paralysis when it comes to armoires just because just this huge blanks <laughs> canvas and there's just so many um, options and opportunities and ways you can the, the directions that you can take on such a big piece are endless so it's sometimes I just got to nail down a concept and just go so I'm trying to make myself do that maybe tomorrow uh, you guys take care have a great week and I'll see you guys soon bye